Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to 3D Collisions and Game Maker. So I've had a bit of a minor, hopefully, change of plans in the order that these videos are going to come out. I was originally going to do triangles against triangles today, but to make a long story short, I decided that the solution that I had for triangle versus triangle I did not like very much, so I'm going to put that off for another week or so to hopefully give myself time to, uh, to figure out a better solution, and in the meantime today I'm going to talk about triangles and lines. So, um, if I were to run this 3D Collisions demo project, we have, uh, we have the ability to detect some uh, collisions with some 3D objects, such as, um, zoom in, there's the, there's the button, such as the axis line bounding box, I can move my mouse cursor over, I can cast a ray into it, and we can um, obtain some information about the, uh, the location of contact where the, uh, the ray intersected with the axis line bounding box. Today we're going to do that with triangles, so if I were to... If I were to give myself a triangle, uh, we do not yet have code to detect ray cast hits or line cast hits with a uh, with a triangle. We're going to do that today. So in the call shapes code file in uh, the triangle class, I've collapsed all the the rest of them so that we can uh, save a little bit of space. I am going to first look inside a uh, check ray, and thanks to some code that we have already written, this is actually going to be pretty simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the plane that the um, representing the, the, the plane of the triangle. I'm going to call it var plane is going to equal self dot get plane. I'm going to uh, I'm going to cast a ray into that plane. We can say plane dot check ray. Uh, the ray that we are going to check is going to be the one that we are uh, taking as a parameter to the check ray function in the, of the triangle. So the first one is going to be ray. Uh, the second parameter is going to be a, uh, a plane hit info. A, a hit information object. This, you might want to make this the uh, the hit information object that we're also passing to this triangle, except we actually don't want to, because this will set some, uh, this will set some of the information of the hit info, and if the, uh, if the ray does not actually collide with the triangle, we don't want that. So I'm going to create myself a separate hit info object. I'm going to call this plain hit info is going to be new raycast hit information. And we are going to instead pass this plane hit info to the uh, to the check ray method of the plane. Um, if if the ray does not hit the plane, then we know that there is no collision. We can just return false. So if the ray that you're casting doesn't hit the plane that the triangle lives on, you know by extension that the ray that you're casting also does not hit the triangle itself. That's pretty simple. Next. Um, if the uh, if the ray does hit the plane, then we need to figure out if the um, if the point of contact between the ray and the plane is actually within the triangle, and we can use our friend that we defined not so long ago, the barycentric coordinate, for uh, for this purpose. So the barycentric coordinate, just as a refresher, is going to be a uh, a different way of looking at a uh, the coordinate of a point relative to a triangle. Um, it is going to have a value of one zero zero if the point is. Um, exactly at the uh, the first point of the triangle is just going to have a value of zero one zero if the point is exactly sitting on the second point of the triangle and it is going to have a value of zero zero one if the uh, if the point is sitting on exactly the third uh, vertex of the triangle and if it's somewhere in the middle it'll have coordinates somewhere between zero and one if it is off the triangle in any direction then it will have a uh, some coordinate that is greater than one or le or less than zero so what we can do, knowing this, is we can take the we can take the point where the ray hits the plane, and we can turn this into a barycentric coordinate. So I'm going to say var result is going to be plane hit info dot point. So that is the exact point in space where the collision between the plane and the ray happens. Um, I am going to turn this into a barycentric coordinate by saying var uh, barycentric. Did I spell that right? B a r y centric is going to be equal to self dot barycentric and the parameter that this is going to take is going to be the result. So we've taken this point, we've turned it into a barycentric coordinate with respect to the triangle that we're checking. Now, all we have to do is check to see if the, um, if this barycentric coordinate is within the triangle. Uh, again, we know that if all three of the, uh, if all three of the coordinates on the bar, if all three of the, um, yeah, the coordinates of the barycentric coordinate are within the range of 0 to 1 inclusive, then the point is within the triangle, otherwise it is not. So we can say if 
Barry's centric, and I'm going to use two parentheses here. Barry's centric dot x is greater than or equal to zero, and Barry's centric dot x is less than or equal to one. Uh, close parentheses, and we're going to do the exact same thing for the y. Um, Barry's centric dot y is greater than or equal to zero, and Barry's centric dot y is less than or equal to one. Lastly, you probably can figure out where this is going to go if barycentric dot z is greater than or equal to zero and barycentric dot z is less than or equal to one. If all these conditions are true, if all six of these conditions are true, then the, uh, the barycentric coordinate is within the triangle, then the point is within the triangle, we can uh, return true. We would likely uh, like to, uh, to update the original hit info that we passed into the um, that we passed into the check array method, so that uh, whatever's calling this code can can have the knowledge of where that hit occurred. Uh, so we can say hit info dot update, and we can just copy in the uh, the information from the plain hit info uh, struct because that is going to be exactly the same information. Uh, hit info dot update plain hit info dot distance. That is an email. I thought I closed my email before I started recording. Apparently I didn't. All right. Go away, email. Uh, the argument, what arguments does this take? This is, this is um, distance, shape, point, and the surface normal. Okay. That's what I thought they were. So we can uh, take the distance, which is just going to be plain hit info.distance. We can take the shape, which is going to be our self. Uh, we can take, I've already forgotten what the, okay, the point which is just going to be result, uh, which is going to be a uh, plain hit info dot point. And we can take the surface normal, which is going to be plain hit, plain underscore hit info dot normal. You could also use the triangles normal. It doesn't matter. But since uh, that's already been calculated, there's no real reason to. Where is it exactly? It's this one. There's no reason to have to calculate the, uh, the triangles normal all over again. So. Uh, if this doesn't happen, then the ray does not intersect the triangle. We can return false. And if I were to run the game now, and if I were to give myself a, uh, a triangle collision shape, uh, we should be able to see when I when I have my mouse cursor going into the triangle, we have a ray cast. We have the position where this is being where the triangle is being hit by the mouse. We have the normal of the triangle, which is just indicated by the uh, the second ball that's floating about an inch above the first one. Uh, you will notice, and you may have seen this a minute ago when I accidentally turned over the camera, this is only one direction. This only works in one direction because uh, planes uh, planes detect ray casts in only one direction. And this on top is the back face of the triangle. And if I were to try to ray cast into here, no hit would be detected. Um, only a ray cast on the, uh, the front facing side of the triangle will be detected. I am not currently planning on going into making the ray cast detect collision with the reverse side of the triangle, but if you want to do that, and you made it this far in the series, it shouldn't be too difficult for you to figure out how to, for example, reverse the triangle by uh, by reversing the order of its of its vertices and checking that for collision instead. Naturally, this will be twice as expensive as checking the original triangle with the raycast, but okay, let's see. I did not mean to run the game again. Next, we need to go check line. Um, I guess I could I could cross off that. Uh, triangle ray. So next we need to check triangles with lines and triangles and lines are going to look a lot like triangles and um, Triangles and ray casts and triangles and lines are going to look a lot like some of the other line test functions uh, That we've uh, that we've written for the other shapes in that this is going to look a lot like uh, creating a ray out of the line and just figuring out if the section of the ray that is a uh, constrained within the line intersects the triangle. So rather than writing a bunch of code all over again, I'm going to say var, var direction is going to equal line dot finish dot sub line dot start. And we're gonna, we're gonna normalize this because we want this to have a unit length of one. And we're going to create ourselves a ray. Var ray is going to be a new call ray. And this is going to have an origin, which is going to be line.start. It's going to have a direction, which is going to be 
the direction that we just calculated a moment ago. Uh, we are going to create ourselves a little hit info. Var hit info is going to equal new raycast hit information. Uh, if, let's see, if self.check ray, uh, taking the ray and the hit info. So if a collision is detected between the, uh, the ray that the line lives on and the, um, and the triangle, then we can simply return uh, true if hit info dot distance is less than or equal to line lowercase line dot length. So if the uh, the distance between the start of the uh, of the line and the are there oh that should be a uh, return um, if the distance between the start of the uh, the line and the uh, the location of the hit is less than the length of the line then you know that there is a collision uh, somewhere between the start and the end of the line with the triangle. Otherwise, there is none. And we can just uh, return false at the end. This should be it for triangles and lines. If I were to um, go in here and zoom in and create myself a triangle, and if I were to, let's see, create myself a line. Okay, you know what took me like 15 minutes to figure out why my test wasn't working is because I was checking for the uh, the triangle against the line and not the other way around and I need to go in call line. I need to turn that around and say uh, return triangle dot check line taking ourself as a parameter. Also while I'm uh, while I'm on the subject, um, is it worth going into uh, into ray and turning that around too saying uh, return triangle dot check ray uh, taking uh, our self and the hit info yeah I think I'll do that so you're going to notice that we are going to run into the same uh, the same little issue that that the triangle in the line had and I, I've updated my uh, I've updated my test scene a little bit so that we can we can have a ray that I mean a line that um is generated with a random rotation in space rather than when it's uh, aligned with an, an axis because that is a little hard to uh, to see visually. So if I'm going to generate a a triangle and if I were to try to rotate the ray through it, you can see that, and I, I had it momentarily, uh, we're, only, uh, we're only cutting through a little bit of the triangle at the bottom here, which is maybe not ideal. But anyway, you can see that we have uh, the shape overlapping, we can see that if I move the line uh, forward or backwards, uh, we will start or stop overlapping. It is really hard to... Can I move this thing, like, up and down? Let me, let me generate a better triangle, like, that doesn't suck. Hang on. Alright, that's a little bit better. So you can see that if I were to have the, uh, the line piercing through the triangle, we have a collision detected. If I were to move it to the side, uh, we would stop having a collision detected if I were to move it. Can I move it in or out or just, uh, not really. Okay. I didn't make my test that fancy. If I were to rotate it, you would see what I, uh, mentioned earlier in that we are only going to be detecting a collision with the triangle from the one direction. And again, if you want to, uh, if you want to account for both of these, it should not be too difficult to, uh, to reverse the direction of the triangle and check for a collision between the line and the backside. Or you could do this uh, some other ways. You could, um, in addition to checking for um, a ray that is that originates at the start of the line and goes in the direction of the end of the line, you could do it the other way around. Um, if you were to change the check ray code so that the uh, the check ray method also um, will detect a collision with both sides of the triangle, uh, check line will have that built in because check line is just a fancy wrapper around check ray anyway. But again. Triangles are generally one-sided in computers. Uh, if you want to, it should not be too much work to, uh, as I said before, reverse the direction of either the plane of the triangle that you're checking the raycast against or uh, reversing the, the order of the vertices in the triangle or something like that. But I don't want to spend a great deal of time doing that in this, uh, in this video. And I don't think it's something that uh, you will generally be doing often anyway, so I'm going to leave it for now. So, uh, let's see. I can commit some changes. I can... Yeah, I've made my, my line test a little bit nicer, as you can see. Uh, let's just commit this at once.
If you want the code for this, uh, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Uh, branch week 13 triangles and lines should be what we did today. I should have a, uh, a week 13 release by the time this video goes up as well. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. You can see some fun things like uh, your name in the credits at the end of these videos. You could hear a verbal shout out at the end. Featuring yourself, you could see a bit of a preview of my future plans, which I attempt to stick to. These last few weeks have been a little bit off the rails. Anyway, if you wanted to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one Let's Make a Tower Defense game, which is hopefully, hopefully, going to be nice and wrapped up by the end of the year. Fingers crossed. I hope you all found this useful. Next time I will be taking on triangles versus triangles one way or the other, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Gunnar Clovis, Posha, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.